it was one of those things that okay, you've you've just you just received your first paycheck. Now, what are you gonna do for us? Um. And you want to prove to your family that you know you didn't just send me to school for nothing. He's the one who says, babe, we need to draw this month's budget. Yeah. What's up besties and welcome back to another episode of Marriage in Money where we share real stories relating to finances or money in a marriage. Today I'm joined by a good friend of mine, Ompile, who some of you might know as Baked by Ubi. Joranson owns a very successful bakery called Baked by Ubi and she does it with so much grace too. But what you might not know though is that me and Ompile actually go a very long way, like way back in the high school days. She baked my wedding cake, cut my bouquet, and then went on to marry the love of her life a few months later. We have both grown so much over the years and learned so much from each other, but today we're gonna to be tackling a topic about marriage and money. Umpile, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, you look gorgeous too. I'm not as gorgeous as you. No, I know. As soon as she walked in here, I was like, oh my gosh, you look amazing. I, I legit thought you paid somebody to do your makeup. No, no, I can't afford to. Well, not at least not yet. I mean, you must teach me. Please, you must teach me because it looks amazing. Okay, cool. I'll think about. Let me think about it. <laughs> Look, you can run it as like a makeup by Ubi. Mm, you know, then it will, be, it will come across as a contradiction of interests, you know? Also true. Makeup and cakes, how do they fit in? But if you think about it, it's actually art at the end of the day. Yeah. Because cakes with being artistic and mm. face. Also true. See? <laughs> There's something there. We might be launching something. Be on the lookout. Before we go ahead and dive into the serious stuff about marriage and money and all of that, please can you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what's baked by Uppi, mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. So, I used to be a baker but now a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I started baking five, six years ago um, while I was still, you know, in the IT space and also BCAs and then moved over to IBM uh, for corporate experience of six, six, seven years, I think. And then moved over to baking, started baking, been baking, mm -hmm. uh, moved out of my home because baking from home. Mm -hmm. Then I managed to find a place to bake from, employ people and just get the show running. Mm -hmm. So I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I get to believe that. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's that. Um, got two beautiful daughters, got married now. After being with my partner for eight years, Ooh. we got married a year ago. Ooh. Yeah, and I am a wife. Yes, you are a wife. <laughs> marriage and money. But tell yeah. me though, on the topic of marriage and being a wife, yeah. how did you guys meet? Just out of interest. How did you guys meet? <laughs> on a dating site. No way. We met on a dating site. Um, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but we it met. It sounds crazy to hear the story in person because you normally hear, I don't know about you guys, but the most stories I hear about people meeting on dating sites always okay. end sideways. Yeah. They hardly ever end yeah. in marriage. Thank God he was not a swindler, you know. <laughs> it would have went. So we met on a dating site mm -hmm. called The Do. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Back in 2013. Mm. So I was home. I had just completed my graduate program with BCX. Mm. I'm home, you know, on my laptop looking for jobs and an end. And I thought, well, let me get into the doom and, and see what's going on. Got in there and created a profile, mm. uploaded my hottest pictures, <laughs> you know, <laughs> made sure I fit the profile. Yes, of course. And put um, best foot forward. <laughs> I, I created that account and I forgot about it. Mm. Two weeks later, I remembered that I've got a Badu account. Let me check what's going on. And this guy, like a ton of guys in my inbox, were just hollering, like, mm. hi, beautiful, you are stunning. Can we link up? You know how men are. Yes. You know, boys, rather. They can't boys are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was there, and the first thing I remember, well, I saw a bit of his face, but he used to be a rugby player, so mm. he's quite, you know, thick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he has this huge cast, and the first picture I saw was a picture of his cast, and mm. I was like, you have such huge <laughs> cost. That was the only thing that, you know, came out of my <laughs> mind, you know, my head. Yeah. And um, we, I didn't talk to him for some time, although he was, you know, sending messages. Mm -hmm. And he visited, 
my place and it started from there. Yeah, one thing led to another. Oh my goodness, yeah, he made me laugh. He kept me company the whole time. Well, that's wonderful. And now look at you guys, two beautiful daughters yeah. later. Yeah. A whole beautiful marriage. While we're in this topic about marriage and relationships, mm -hmm. during those fun few months, you know, when they say in the honeymoon phase, did you guys ever talk about money? Like, did the money topic ever come up? Um, we never really spoke about money when we were dating. Um, the because we our honeymoon phase was when we started dating. Really. Mm -hmm. You know, we still Google Gaga over each other. You mm -hmm. know, um, money can be a very sensitive conversation. Yeah. So I think we both didn't know how to bring it up. Mm -hmm. We were just both trying to be perfect with each other. Mm -hmm. You know that um, if you're gonna find this beautiful girl, she's got her money right. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, that that was just an, an assumption. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really the case. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this guy, I really like him, I really love him. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he does have his finances right. Mm -hmm. um, so we never really spoke about money until we had to plan for a trip to mm -hmm. Cape Town. This was now before we had our daughter, our first daughter. We were like, okay, we need, to, we want to go to Cape Town for mm -hmm. like a week, mm -hmm. a week and a half. And okay, so how much do you have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, our first conversation. Yeah, yeah. The conversation started. Uh, we didn't disclose how much we were making, mm -hmm. but we were able to say, "Well, I can put away a thousand grand every month until mm -hmm. December." You know, so that's when the whole money talk started. Started. Yeah. 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 And would you say you guys had the formal conversation after marriage, or still? Leading up to the yeah, wedding. Yeah. So leading up to the wedding, we definitely had to have you know um, money talks because mm -hmm. now this is a man I've been with for eight years. Mm -hmm. You know, with kids with, mm -hmm. and yes, as much as you know, culturally he had to pay the lobola. Mm -hmm. um, we still needed to live. You know, he True. was still. True. He still he was still being the man that he was. You know, taking mm -hmm. care of finances, most finances in the house. Mm -hmm. We actually did sit down and talk about now the wedding itself, mm -hmm. the preparations that comes in it. How are we now going to do it? Because it was now us. While on the topic about, you know, paying Lobola and mm -hmm. the parents asking for much and I know it, there's always that one angle. But I think the one thing that's coming up in my head now is did you ever have that money conversation with your family? before getting married? Like, did they ever sit you down to say, this is how you make money, this is what you do, this is what you don't? Um, not really. I had to pull my own canoe when it came to finances, mm -hmm. how to handle finances, and growing up, you know, I made a lot of bad financial mistakes, you know, like mm -hmm. terrible, that um, I've managed to fix a few, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still fixing some. Mm -hmm. So, I never had, uh, no one in my family ever sat me down and said, you know, Peter, now that uh, you're working, uh, you're going to start working, here's how you should try and manage your finances. Instead, you know, it was one of those things that, okay, you've, you've just, you just received your first paycheck. Now, what are you going to do for us? Yeah, exactly. Suddenly, <laughs> there's problems that starts, you know, creeping up. There's yeah. issues, you know, there's things that, that suddenly the roof is leaking. Suddenly, someone is getting machine is too small. You know, the, yeah. And at that time, I'm trying to find my feet in Joburg. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in Joburg, there's no puzzle shop to get bread, which is yeah. 10 rand and walk out. Yeah. There's AP can pay next to you. Yes. You get in with a thousand rand you come out, you know, a thousand two hundred rand. God, right, exactly. <laughs> so I did not have the luxury of having anyone mm -hmm. in my family sitting me down mm -hmm. and trying to educate me about managing my yeah. finances. Yeah. You know, however, with the Lobola thing, it was okay. I knew how much you know had been checked out. I was like, well, I just want to know, mm -hmm. what do you do with the money? Mm -hmm. Yes, you've received it, yeah. you know, but what is it for? Yeah. Who does it go to? I mean, what is it contributing to? Mm. There were a few politics around that issue, but um, at least my mom is, I like my mom, she's very young, you know, she's still mm. very young, only 16 years older than me, mm. so she was able to understand where I was coming from, mm. and she was able to convince, you know, the uncles now to 
I said, no, but I mean, she is telling the truth. Yeah. We need to chip in something to contribute to the whole ceremony. Yeah. I think it's very nice that she had actually something we can level up mm. with them to say, let's be realistic, yeah. guys. What do you yeah. expect? Because I, I generally feel like, especially for us village girls, as yeah. soon as you in how they, they're like, yes, she's mining gold. Yeah. Okay. She's made it. If, yeah. <laughs> she's made it. When you go back home, there's all these expectations to yeah. say, you know. Fix this, fix that, buy this, mm -hmm. and while you at it, give me more money. Okay. Even when they never really teach you about money, I never had the conversation with my parents. I mean, I was just telling um, Dizzy Basil that I still have this one visual of my dad. Every month when he got paid, he would bring his whole entire salary home and home and splash the money on the bed. But she, he would never really say, like, you know, um, this is for groceries and this is yeah. for this and maybe they had the conversation mm -hmm. with my mom but all I saw was when you get paid mm -hmm. you bring the money home bring the patient home. exactly and I asked this I'm like why did you do that but then I put <laughs> myself in the act I'm like wait wait I need to unlearn this mm -hmm. yeah but tell me you know over and above the whole conversation you had about Lobola's wedding them helping you does it feel weird is, is this like an awkward weird topic to bring up when you're home um, and not not your home with your husband, like home with your mom, because let's be real, mm -hmm. black tax is a thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, yes. and everybody has expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you have kids, you're married, yeah. they still have expectations. Yeah. Does it feel weird having to talk to them about it? You know what? It's it's not weird. It just takes me guts. Mm -hmm. I need to prepare myself emotionally. You know, because there's a thing of when you approach your parents, you have to approach them with respect. Yes. You know, and sometimes you know that what they are saying really it is just I'm not really making good. sense. Yes. You know, you just want to tell them where to get off mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. what they say is not making sense. Mm -hmm. So it's not uncomfortable for me to to talk about money or you know the help that they, they did or even when I was approaching them for the help, mm -hmm. it was not uncomfortable. It was just me preparing myself, you know, making sure that I choose the right diction when approaching them. That you know, if I'm gonna go in, how do I address it? Like even now, when my mom rings me up and says, "Look, I'm out of fuel," and I'll tell her straight up that I don't yeah. have the money for fuel. Yeah. You know, I can I can see what I can do a month end, but. You need to remember that I've got responsibilities mm -hmm. now. You know, what you used to pay for me for school fees is different to what I'm paying for my kids for school fees. Yeah. You know, I tell my mom how much we pay for our kids' school fees. So like, what? Is that so much like, you know, Are you crazy? Why you know, you know exactly. Money? But I mean, what we are now trying to do is to create a future for our kids that's different from, from ours, from what we had. Mm -hmm. You know, we have bigger, better versions, mm -hmm. visions rather, mm -hmm compared to what our parents had. So when it comes to money, I do tell when I don't have it. Mm -hmm. And when I do have it, well, now that I'm married, I get a, I like literally throw my husband under the bus. And I'm like, oh, I have to ask my husband yes, first. You know? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't just give it out. Like, well, let me That's see what happens. Of course, you know? <laughs> and they have to observe. Yes, the protocol <laughs> must be observed. Mm -hmm. But is this something that you guys talked about, you know, after marriage or maybe before even to say, you know, now that we're together, our money is our household money. Mm -hmm. um, we can't just, yes, we have families mm -hmm. and you know, they will need help one way or another, but at the same time, mm -hmm. where do we draw the line? Mm -hmm. So my husband believes that um, we are just continuing with our relationship, just only. Mm -hmm. That's how he sees it. Yeah. And I always disagree with him on that mm -hmm. because when we're just boyfriend and girlfriend, I mean, you, I could get away with giving away money mm -hmm undetected mm. yes, <laughs> yes you know and so could he mm. so i did you know put it to him that you know now that we're married and i think it's a mistake that we also did we did not really sit down and clear up the expectations mm. once married you know we just Nyani, I, I agree with him at some point that we just thought that you know what we are continuing mm -hmm. we've done so good for eight years already we're just I mean we're just formalizing mm -hmm. but now that we're married we are actually born mm -hmm. and I said to him some time ago I was like you know babe when we are not going to spend money we need to just make each other our way mm -hmm.
we need to make sure that we attend to the household needs first before we could send out any money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even if we do send out any money to assist any one of our families, can we talk about it first? Yeah, you know, because we don't want to get to a point where the one family is benefiting more or the others, you know, less. And it was just a matter of can we treat them equally? Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've also taken the talk a bit further to say, you know what, let's have a savings account, mm -hmm. you know, throw in, even if it's a 150 or 200 grand in it on a monthly basis and we know that that is strictly for eco better yeah you know yes, that eco that unexpected say, phone call you yeah. know for the ish there was yeah. a phone call from home this is what's going on mm -hmm. we know that's when we will dip you know, take the money on from. And you're able to yeah. have that ceiling to say, this yeah. is all we got. Yeah, like you've reached your limit, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> um, we can't do any more. Yeah. Let's try again next year. Yeah. I actually really like that. <laughs> I'm seriously <laughs> considering that we yeah. should do that because we, we just wing it. <laughs> no. It's a mm. case by case oh. situation. But the one thing that we always go back to is, you know, the saying that says, don't make somebody else's emergency a priority. No, yeah, definitely. Where we're just like, yes. It's an emergency, granted, but at the same time, we're gonna have an emergency if we okay. give this. But I like that, you know, have a little piggy bank, and then yeah. every time that somebody calls, you're like, that's all I got. Yeah, you take the Yeah, and, and it's not a monthly thing. Yeah, it's a uh, once a year. Yeah, yeah. and you know, if we also actually even thought that we'll tell them that you know we do have something mm -hmm. for you guys. Mm -hmm. If you guys need money, mm. okay, but it will get depleted mm -hmm. and we'll start again the next year. Yeah. No, and we're not doing the whole interest rate thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right now, this year, we're putting it in the box. Exchange rate is better now. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> did you have any financial commitments before marriage? And how did you like bring that up? And did your husband have it as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, before marriage, you had a lot of financial commitments. As girlfriend or boyfriend in jail from the minute we started dating because I mean when we were here at his own place mm -hmm. and own place. I mean paying rent is a financial commitment. It is. You know, um to go load, I mean there were things, you know, uh, like I mentioned to you, mm -hmm. you get your first paycheck and you wanna prove to your family that you know, you didn't just send me to school for nothing. Mm -hmm. I'll actually be able to help as and when, mm -hmm. you know. So credit cards, overdrafts, you know. You go all out. Mm. All know. the things the financial bankers tell you, you need this. I exactly. give you good credit. You which... know, and now come out that you realize that you left with nothing. Open a clothing account, you need winter clothes now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And you're in the office every day, you want to look the part, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, image is everything. True. So I had a lot of those, which I ended up talking to him about, you know, to the whole Cape Town trip thing. Yeah. We started being more open about our finances. Um, told them that you know, um, I have my clothing accounts, I have this, I have that. Um, we didn't do anything then to help each other financially. Mm -hmm. You know, we were still okay. But I mean, if we're gonna go for a date, I mean, yeah, he's married. Yeah. So sure. we didn't really talk much about um, who does what, who doesn't do what, how much is coming in, mm -hmm. how do we put money together. Mm -hmm. You know, it only became serious, like proper serious when we were pregnant. Mm. Yeah, because you know, kids will change yeah. your life. <laughs> That's when we realized that, okay, we need to start knowing how much we, we, we are both making. We now both need to sit down and say, okay, well, we, we actually need to to stay together then, like full time like, under the same roof. Yeah. Okay, you making this much, I'm making this much. Um, this is how much the rent is. Mm -hmm. This is what we can do for the food. And my, oh, you know, my husband is actually very smart. He's a mm -hmm. smart guy. I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. He is yeah. brilliant. Mm -hmm. And he came and said, you know what? We're going to drop a budget. Mm -hmm. um, we sat down. He introduced me to budgeting. The first time in oh, my wow. life. Oh, wow. Imagine. I had been working for so the long. The whole time. And then, and then suddenly this man is like, no, we have to have a budget. You know, mm -hmm. we pulled out Excel and was doing oh, this wow. thing. And we actually lived of a budget in our house mm -hmm. and we still do that's amazing and do you guys like stick to the budget not always because mm -hmm. i mean you know with women things change man there's new lashes in the market they know like 150 now nah, if you need to buy something okay well there's some other let's grab it mm -hmm. you know and we need it i mean we've all heard from 
pretty much almost every single financial expert live within your means mm. and do the budget to yeah. do this and do that and it's actually very interesting that you said you didn't budget mm -hmm. before you oh. actually got to the point where you're like okay we have a little bundle of joy coming and he's like let's get our act together mm -hmm. would you say from that point you sort of got an eye-opener to say okay if I budget, I know where my money is going. Or was it just another thing that you were doing to say, okay, let's do it, but I mean, we no, still it. was definitely an eye-opener. And he's the one who says, babe, we need to draw this month's budget. Yeah. I actually like that a lot because it creates a, not just an expectation, but you walk around knowing exactly what's going on in yeah. your household yeah. to a point where when you come home with food, he's getting anxious to say, yeah. oh my God, how are we affording yeah. this? Yeah, you know? yeah. So I really like that. Mm. And the fact that he's also comfortable doing that because mm. I mean I don't know about you but I come from a background where you don't really ask a man about money my dad was comfortable to bring money home yeah. but everybody else like you don't dare ask a man about money and hearing you say you do the budget together mm. it's, it's a very refreshing mm. point of view and I'm sure there's somebody sitting watching this video thinking oh my god her husband does that there is still people that are still trapped in and my he's mind. the one who's always initiated the meeting and now that we're living out my budget and we do every man mm -hmm. sit down every man we've got the actual the expected the whatever the projected you know we we do have a whole budget template we set a date and time yeah you know to say okay today it's budget day at yeah. this time yeah. you know and any with any other issues we experience in our marriage and our relationship or whatever else you want to clear the air that babe, are you available tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I want to sit down and talk to you. We actually set a meeting. I know. <laughs> and there's a whole agenda, and you have to present yourself. Be there and listen. Mm -hmm. so. And it gives you time to cool off. I'm the hot kid in our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the hot kid. I'm the one who's just like exploding. Yeah. <laughs> and Dean is just like, Okay. <laughs> what is that now? But did you guys have any like financial money challenges in your marriage and how did you like get over that or are you still getting over that? Mm. We we used to. We used to. Um to a point where I had to place myself under debt really well. Um, when I left IBM, or should I say with IBM go rid of me? Because yeah. the was always making <laughs> um no, I don't have any income anymore. Mm -hmm. And I still have all these financial obligations mm -hmm. that I needed to meet on a monthly basis. And I thought, well, to make whatever money I've got stretch, mm -hmm. let me put myself on a debt review. Mm -hmm. So whatever I was paying back to my credit card, you know, it will be at least half of it. Yeah. So at least everyone still gets to get paid, mm -hmm. you know, but just a tiny just bit. Just a tiny bit to keep you know. going. Yeah. So, Gosh, th those were the problematic times. Mm -hmm. With me now starting a business with no funding, mm -hmm. nothing. You know, everything was literally bought from our pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, me being obsessed about baking, um, asking him for money to go buy an oven, mm -hmm. to buy this, to buy that. You know, it ended up leading to a point where I was making payment arrangements for school fees. Mm -hmm making payment arrangements for rent. Um, it was just crazy. Mm -hmm. Me canceling my medical aid mm -hmm. just so that we could have we can survive. So, so that we could survive. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. we've been through that. We've been through a lot. And, and this is the stuff that people don't see. No. I think we all we all live in this bubble where the next person's life is perfect. Yeah. And you're going through stuff alone. And it, it's a sad reality. It is. And it's it's also eye-opening in a way when you get to hear stories like mm -hmm. this, you say, oh my God, so mm -hmm. I'm not alone. So yeah. we are not crazy. Mm -hmm. It's just, to a certain degree, a series of events that just led you to that point. Mm -hmm. and, and hearing you say that is profound because <laughs> I'll admit, I'm one of the people who look at you and think, She's made it. She's been making it since we walked out of San Ends, okay? And hearing you say that makes me think, oh wait, I was like, thank you. <laughs> no, seriously, it's, it's true. And because 
we don't talk about money. Mm -hmm. We show the Cape Town holiday, mm -hmm. we show the Durban holiday, yeah. and you know, out in the jungle, mm -hmm. but we never really say, by the way, I kind of sort of got a personal yeah. loan for this yeah. trip. No. We don't say that. So hearing you say it is incredible. Yo, it really we is. Had tough, we have had it tough before. Like, we have had it tough. And I'm not saying little tough, I'm talking like big tough. Yeah. At some point, we even lost our car. Wow. Yeah. Now we'll be talking about your business and you know household money and all of that stuff. Is your business a part of the household money? It used to be before we became bed registered. Okay. Um, before we had a proper accounting tool, mm -hmm. you know. Because remember that was my only bread and butter. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that was before I paid myself salary before we had payroll <laughs> but now we've got all of these things in place yeah they've got op as a separate entity mm -hmm. um and my husband and i he's a isp mm -hmm. working for himself mm -hmm. under his business mm -hmm. and versa m which is his company's business is a separate entity perform mm -hmm. so what we do we pay ourselves salaries mm -hmm. and that's what we bring home mm -hmm. business is business because we can't allow businesses to suffer you know, because because going through, you know, that yeah. 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. So we have to separate the two. Yeah. These, these aren't our side hustles. Mm. The, I mean, our businesses are literally our bread and butter. That's incredible. With all this money talk and finances and marriage and yeah. you're a businesswoman, you're a mother, you're a wife, all the hats that you wear, yeah. what would you say is the best and worst money advice you've ever received? Yo, the worst money advice I've ever received was that of if you've got money spend it, don't wait for tomorrow. <laughs> really? No, like can we just think of it? No, 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 was from my husband that just budget mm -hmm. and to also have the uncomfortable conversation mm -hmm. of finances mm -hmm. once you are able to open up about your finances once you are able to stay true to yourself sit down and actually budget mm -hmm. you must get to see where you're going wrong and where you're going right mm -hmm. so that was the best advice ever mm -hmm. that just take time mm -hmm. sit down and do the budgeting well thank you for coming and for being a part of this i hope you guys enjoyed watching this i hope you have learned something you know if there's anything that i'm taking out of this is don't be afraid to have that conversation mm -hmm. you know it's good in the long run it's only uncomfortable temporarily yeah. and then you get over it before you know it you know you're making better financial decisions you and your husband are on the same page because i think the other thing that really sets us back is the fact that we're both in the same house but on different pages when it comes to money you still want to order from uber eats and i'm like oh my god no please don't do that we can't afford it you know <laughs> And it creates this silent tension that mm. keeps going where mm. you're wondering why is Oki so mad today? Yeah. We ate the yummy food I brought home mm. and the food was the problem. Yeah. You know? And you know, the food was the problem. <laughs> but I think it's also that thing of expectations, you know. We, some people want the wedding, not so much the marriage. Yes. And some people struggle to make the marriage work mm. because they don't want to have, or not even, you know, we're assuming they don't want to have, maybe because they don't know how to have the uncomfortable conversation. True. Because we were never taught to have the True. uncomfortable conversation. True. It's stressful enough to talk about, you know, who's paying for the school fees. Like, <laughs> are we doing 50 50? Are we not? And then all of a sudden you want to start talking about. Big things like are we buying a house, mm. or, or are you gonna surprise me with a no. house, or or I'm the wife who's expecting my husband to buy me a car, yes. and the husband is there drowning because oh, he gosh, wants yeah. to buy me this car that I've been talking mm. about, but he can't afford it at no. all. And now you're putting pressure on him; he starts losing his mind. Exactly. Next thing you know, he is depressed. And your you marriage know. is falling apart. It's falling apart. And you're like, we were so happy. You fall for divorce and you take everything he has. <laughs> also true. You take everything he has and no way. And you know, I, I probably should talk to somebody who's divorced because of this. Oh, because my thing is, I'd love to know if at some point they ever thought I was the problem. 
you know, I, so. I, I, it was me. It's because I didn't know how to talk about money. I think so. Oh, they probably yeah. never like, comfortable with calling ourselves out. True. So <laughs> and so why would I be no. at fault? I'm not going to study the mirror and say, Umpila, you messed it up. Yeah. You did this. No way. Yeah. It was yeah. him. True. <laughs> True. Yeah, no, but we do need to have those uncomfortable conversations. If, yeah. if you're serious about building, yes. you're serious about going somewhere with your marriage, mm -hmm. it, they need to be had. And we need to realize that Instagram is not real life. That's not. And you know, marriage is not built on love alone. <laughs> and marriage is not built on the wedding. Alone. Yes. Yes. You know, it's not built on the diamond ring you've got. Yeah. It's it's a lot of choices, difficult conversations, uncomfortable situations that you never get together. I was saying to my husband, I'm like, you know, men and women, yes, we are married differently and I mean we all know that. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand how, with us being wired differently, men don't just think with men and women and women. <laughs> exactly, because <laughs> then... I'm like, yes, God, now, on some world, well, there's you men, there's you women. Totally different. Yeah. Get, together Get together and, and make, make it work. work. <laughs> <laughs> how unfair is that, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, I mean, I guess we just have to make it work. We have to. Yeah. The, the whole opposites attract. Mm. We have to make mm. it work. Mm. I, we just have to be willing. We have to be willing to make it, to work. Make it work. Otherwise, we're just setting ourselves up for failure. Yeah. It'll be my money and his money, mm. and then we just never get anywhere because my money alone won't buy us a penthouse, mm. and his mm. money alone won't buy me a car. Because mm. so I also used to be very comfortable asking for money from my husband. Mm. You know, and I said to him, "Can, can I not ask you for money? Mm. <laughs> can you just?" See, yeah, <laughs> but you just don't see, see that I need money. <laughs> you just see him and you just put it there. Yeah, yeah. Hence the yellow card. Yeah, <laughs> the money in the sea. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Think now, so. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually a great idea because it mm. is uncomfortable asking for money. Mm. It really is uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable, um, especially if you're a driven yeah. person because mm. it, it has that. Strangely enough, that connotation in the back of your mind that says you fail, you you can't afford your habits. You know, our marriage um, that um, our, the, t the attorneys were using, mm -hmm. I remember the same time, I was like, you know, you want to take a guess why a lot of people divorce. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, <laughs> do I want to have that conversation now? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, it's not because the husband or the wife cheated, or it's about money. Mm -hmm. Because couples, a lot of them, they fail to actually make time to sit down mm -hmm. and initiate or start the uncomfortable conversation around money. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing with us your story. I hope this is going to be helpful to somebody. I mm -hmm. hope this is going to help others have uncomfortable conversations about money. And you guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. Go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. What did you learn? What are you unlearning? What are you trying to do in your marriage, if anything? What are your tips and tricks of handling money in your marriage? And let's help each other grow. This is not a space to judge each other. Money on its own has always had this very bad reputation that it has to be secret. You know, it's my money and nobody has to know. I'm not saying tell us how much you make, but let's help each other out. Let's all grow together. Let's all build our empires together um, without judging each other and without making each other feel like I use your tip and therefore I owe you. You do it out of the goodness of your heart. And with that, we're going to call it a day. Hit the like button and we'll see you guys on our next video. Bye guys.